PS5 controller uh, with L-Stick major drift. Let's just check it. So spin your uh, L joystick slowly. Yep, it's jitters, it jitters here. It's a major jitter. Yep, it jitters here. Yep, so as you can see, uh, L-Stick is jittery. Let's just check the R-Stick. Yep, R stick is okay. So check L3 B10 value. Yep, that's 100% okay. Check R3 B11 value. Yep, that's 100% okay. As you can see now, uh, L stick is is drifting. A uh, few things we need to check. We need to check the potentiometer wipers. We need to check the potentiometer track on this. Uh, we can clean up. Uh, many a times it has to be replaced with the brand new ones. Uh, we have to investigate the L-Stick mechanical as well. These are the tools required in order to carry out the fix. Plastic pry opening tool, Phillips 00 screw bit screwdriver, flathead pliers, brand new potentiometers with brand new wipers uh, the potentiometer values is 2.3 kilo ohm cleaning uh, setup we have is ultrasonic cleaner with 100 percent isopropyl alcohol q-tips cleaning toothbrush and this is the hako soldering and desoldering setup we have um, we will be using a hako k knife set bit um, hako fr41003 desoldering gun and some flux. We'll be opening up PlayStation 5 controller. Step one will be opening up this black plate. Um, grab your plastic pry opening tool and there are four clips one, two, three, four. So unclip it. You may have to wrestle with it a little bit, but that's okay, it does come off. Next, uh, we'll be removing our L1, R1 buttons. So they have two clips. Uh, you can just gently pull it up from here. Next, um, we have four screws here. One, two, three, four. So grab, grab your Phillips screwdriver and unscrew these. Next, we'll be removing our back case. So, unclip these two clips first. And then run your pry opening tool here. So, that's that side is off. You may have to wrestle with it a little bit, but it does come off. So, so that's our back cover removed. Next, we'll be removing the battery and the battery compartment. Uh, in order to remove the battery compartment, take out this screw. Uh, then we have one, two, three, four, and the touchpad flex ribbon cables. Remove these first. So grab your pliers, unplug these. Next. Uh, in order to work with the motherboard, we'll be desoldering the vibrator cables. Grab your flux pen, add some flux. Uh, 
and desolder them. Next, uh, there are two clips here. Um, one and two. Unclip those and we'll be able to lift our motherboard. Remove the two caps and next we'll be opening up the potentiometers of the left stick. So that's this one. So unclip it from here. Take out both the wipers. Next, let's have a look at the track. Um, let's try to clean it up first and uh, so we can see the track properly. So just to quickly show you, this is what's happening. Um, the left track, this one, uh, the carbon is there. So this is 100% okay. However, if you look at the bottom track, uh, it's missing here and here, which means this potentiometers, we have to desolder this, find this resistance value, and replace it with the exact same resistance value. Step one, um, before doing that, we'll be cleaning up these two wipers also. So grab some iso alcohol, Q-tips, toothbrush, and let's just clean it up first. So put some iso alcohol there. Clean it up. As you can see it clearly now that yep the track is burnt on this one next uh, we'll be using the ultrasonic cleaning machine with 100% isopropyl alcohol just dip both your wipers into the 100% iso alcohol and clean it for one minute Next, uh, take the two wipers out and we'll be using a soft bristles toothbrush and the cleaning of the carbon on these wipers. So after cleaning your both the wipers it should look like this so that's the left one and that's the bottom one um, just to quickly show you the example of bad wipers and if that happens what to do so we have so just in case while cleaning you bend it like this if it's like this that's it it's gone not much you can do you have to replace it with a brand new one it's not going to read the values and you're still going to have jitter and shakiness. Now here's another example. It's bent anywhere. So it's gone. Uh, if any of the if these um, plastic pieces are bent, broken, not much you can do. You have to replace it with the brand new ones. Next, uh, we'll be desoldering our uh, burnt potentiometer, which is the bottom one. Um, let's set up our board in order to desolder it. Uh, this is a very handy 
Hako KL or K shaped um, desoldering, sorry, soldering tip. So um, you, you can solder it or desolder it with this one um, very quickly. Let's prep our board. Flux the pins and add solder. So place the tip under these three solder joints and you should be able to pull it out. In order to carry out replacement, so we need to find the resistance value of this existing potentiometer. Uh, so grab your multimeter, set it to resistance, and let's find this value. Put your positive and negative pins on the two legs. So the value is 2.01. So Here we have already tons of brand new pre-sorted 2.3k value potentiometers. Um, what we need to do is just we're going to measure the as close as possible resistance values and just replace it with the exact same one. So let's just measure a few and find the closest possible value. So the value we need is 2.01. Set your uh, multimeter to resistance and let's just measure a few. 2104 2.05 2.15 2.02 perfect 2.03 so that's 2.02 that's the closest one and um, when you get the brand new ones even though the brand new ones you still have to take out the wiper and it's best practices to clean it with the iso alcohol still. So let's just do that. Remove the wiper. Just double check it if the track and everything is intact. So put some iso alcohol and clean it with your Q-tip. This is now ready to be soldered on. Next, uh, we'll be using our Hako 41003 desoldering tool to desolder these three points. It's a very powerful tool. It makes it the job very easy. Let's get our uh, potentiometer and the wiper ready. Place it in. Put back the other one first. It should just snap back. Close it. That's one done. Second is find it. Place it in. And now let's just solder these three points.
It's a good habit to clean up the flux with 100% isopropyl alcohol, so clean it up. Done. We are ready to do our case assembly. Uh, before putting it all back together, let's just give it a quick test. So this is how you test your uh, left and right stick inner and outer dead zone values. So connect it to your PC, go to hardwaretester.com slash gamepad. Um, once you have it all detected, this is how you test it. So the inner dead zone, these two values, the X is 0 and the X is 1. That must be below 10%. So this is 0 0.02. That's 2%, this is zero. So that's 0%, so that's this 100% fixed now. So the inner, inner dead zone is 100% fixed now. Uh, the outer dead zone is 96% or above. You cannot check the outer dead zone here. While you have your motherboard like this, you need to put it back all together and that's a, but that's a proper way of testing the outer dead zones. So let's just check the L3, L3 click works. So the outer dead zone values, up, down, left and right, must be 96% and above. So up, you'll always have one, 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 like this. It has to be closed. Uh, last but not least. Let's put it all back together. So grab your whole front case assembly. Uh, place the motherboard in the front case assembly. Once all in, all in place, so press it down. So, yep, that's all snapped back. That's all good. Um, connect the two haptic trigger cables, uh, touchpad cable, and these two flex cables. Next, uh, we'll be soldering the vibrator cables. So grab your soldering iron. Next, we'll be placing our battery compartment tray. So align it. Put back this flex cable. Put back this screw. Connect your battery. Put back your back case. Put back the four screws, so two trigger screws here and two bottom case screws here. Put back the L1, R1 buttons. Put back the black clip. All done. Here we have our controller connected one last time. So let's just quickly check the inner outer dead zone values and uh, let's just uh, do a quick spin to check if the drift has been fixed or not so yep the drift is 100 percent fixed l3 is 100 percent okay uh, the inner dead zone values yep it's 
uh, spin it a couple of times here yep, it's below 10 percent the outer dead zone values up down left and right must be 96 percent or above so up that's 1.00 that's 100 percent down that's 100 percent left that's 100 percent 100 percent all fixed